right, everybody, and welcome to the 1% podcast. I'm joined by, I'm glad to say, a good friend, Josh. How are you, bud? All good, man. All good. It's, uh, yeah, like, what it do? It's been a while, man, honestly. Yeah, it's been. It's we been, do miss you, buddy. Do you know what? I'm coming back uh, September, so I'll be based in the London area, so we'll definitely get some sessions in there. will be sick. Awesome, um, but obviously for you, like, just give a bit of intro, who you are, what you do, and things like that, and then I'll big your head up a little bit, because I know you won't do it. <laughs> yeah, you know me too well, man. Um, so, yeah, gosh, just put my phone on silent there. Looks like we've got clients pinging away, but as you got there, yeah, I'm a coach as well, uh, head coach of uh, Gain and Burn Fitness, which is a business that essentially is around online coaching and personal training. Uh, the main focus is making physique goals possible for all individuals, uh, mostly people who have struggled so much in the past in regards to losing weight, gaining muscle, just trying to change their body composition. And to somewhere they pretty much feel like, nope, I'm the exception. It purely can't happen for me. So like, those are usually the people I work with. Nice, man. And then obviously dabbling to a bit of you. So obviously kept it really quiet, which was nice. Um, Josh has obviously competed for a, a bunch of years now, really. You've done a bunch of shows and things like that. Um, but literally two weeks ago, it popped up and I was like, holy shit, like he, he got second place. Like, holy crap. So obviously um, it was, I, I love that you kept it quiet as well. Um, but yeah, man, just explain, obviously placing in a natural bodybuilding show, which is phenomenal. So just kind of just how you feeling off the back of it? How was, how was the prep itself? Because obviously the last 18 months has been tricky uh, to say the least. So just kind of give me a bit of an update on that sort of stuff, man. Yeah, man, let's start. Um, I think I'll just start with a little bit of that background in regards to my competing. Um, so uh, as you mentioned already, I have competed before. So in 2015 was the first time I sort of stepped, stepped on stage, which was immense physique. Um, and yeah, category that I took me a while to realize is not for me. Um, but it was just purely because I was someone who wanted to have some sort of a challenge um, in regards to my own physique progress and just to see where I was at. So I wanted to see what this bodybuilding thing was all about. Um, a little, you know, I was working with a coach at the time. It wasn't the best to the point where I had to prep myself for that show. And the goal was literally just to make sure I didn't look like an idiot. Like I didn't look like someone who didn't, sh who showed up and even diet or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. I, I didn't want to look completely out of place, um, which we did. It was only five of us. I came fifth, I believe. Anyways, they didn't place us, but I was just so happy that I didn't look bad. Like I had good pictures. That was all right. The guys who were ahead of me, they were like, hey, well done, man. You know, it's okay. And most of these guys have been quite seasoned as well. Um, funny enough, my business mentor, I first met him back then as well. Um, yeah. Great guy, Ollie Carson. And uh, yeah, he's someone who was like going to British finals and all that. Um, and then it then moved on to 2017, where I had done my first sort of real off season. And the goal was like, yeah, I'm going to be really coming back strong for men's physique again. And yeah, I'm going to do well, you know, take some top placings maybe here and there. Complete opposite. Uh, two shows in 2017, uh, pretty much dead last. Um, this time in stacked lineups. So I think like 15 to 20 guys in both shows. And yeah, I was in the last call out. I just said to myself, I was dead last because I just, yeah, looking at the pictures and everything, it just didn't look good. Um, but this is one thing I guess we'll be answering later on, really, which is in regards to when you do like go through phases of fat loss, um, you, you, you have a goal and you reach it where mine was a competition. Um, it's quite important to have that what happens next. And, um, you know, a lot of people say, you know, what to, you know, what is the plan? What do you do? Like, what's the best thing? Um, I always say the best thing is to actually have that kind of have an idea before you actually get to the goal. So don't wait till the goal is done and then try and figure out what's next because you're not relying on emotion. And especially with bodybuilding, you know, relying on emotion after a show can be the worst thing ever because obviously in my case, I was pretty much very disappointed and, you know, it could be a case of me just saying, nope, never again, packing that in. I am done with bodybuilding. Um, these guys are silly, whatever. Maybe even start bad mouthing, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not that kind of guy, but you know, it's it's. I've seen it before. I mean, and, it happens. You know, yeah, you know, it happens a lot. Um, but for me, the cool thing was um, at the time I brought on a coach to work with, Anthony Cedric, which was literally about um, four, three months out to the first show, and um, from right off the bat, he was already telling me, "Mate, you should do natural bodybuilding. Like, you you got a good structure for that." 
Um, I didn't want to listen to him. I was just like so head on men's physique at the time. But, and I was just like, mate, just please, you know, just take care of me in regards to making sure I don't do anything silly. I just need someone to give me a second eye, all that kind of stuff. And he did great. Like he really explained, uh, I, I got a lot of education from him in regards to macronutrients and just learning a lot more about my body and everything. And also a bit more about training. Um, but the cool thing as well he did for me was he kept on nagging me about what's next. And as much as I didn't want to hear it, I was like, I just want to focus on this, want to focus on this. It really did help because when I did step off the stage in 2017, rather than being extremely disappointed and thinking this is never happening for me again, it was a bit of the opposite, which was I was disappointed, but disappointed in the fact that, um, you know, you know, yes, you know, I didn't get what I was looking for, but I was able to realize, did I really do what I, you know, did I really train and do all the work I needed in regards to what I was looking for? And also, you know, in regards to also like, there was a different fire burning and fight inside me now, which was, I don't want to experience that again. Like I've learned this now, that's great, but I'm going to make sure that that was a lesson, not a case of that was it. That can't be my bodybuilding career where I literally just learned that it wasn't for me. I want it to be a case of, I learned that maybe this category is not for me, but yet with more time doing things correctly, training to actually do, you know, like training to actually be in the first call out to actually place in a competition. You know, what does it take? Dieting, you know, again, dieting is not just fat loss. Dieting is your current way of eating, having a proper off season to grow, you know, being, you know, daily with things. I mean, I believe with your podcast, the 1% doing those little things, you know, on a regular basis, was I doing that? And these were things I had to learn over time, which just so happened to be four years before I stepped on stage again. Yeah. But honestly, you, you nailed it there as well, because this is something that you drill into clients and vice versa that like we do. It's like a lot of the time it doesn't come like, yeah, nutrition and training and things like that, but it's the mindset behind that, which is everything. So it is like doing everything with intent. And I think that that is something that you learn over years. It does take time. And it's like, did you, no matter how tired you were, no matter what's been going on, did you execute the best that you could that day? That's it. And if you can walk away from every situation saying that, then you will be in the position you want to be in a hundred percent. So I think let's kind of like, cause this is obviously like super random podcast. I love these ones. So it's great. But Obviously, you coach anything from people that get in photo shoot shape, the average Joes that just kind of, I hate using the word average Joes, but people that just want to go on beach holidays, get in shape for their weddings, and vice versa. I know that you're prepping people for competitions and things like that. So what's the difference? Do you know what I mean? Because I think people think there's a big difference, but actually, like my opinion, there's not a huge difference. No, um, 100%. Uh, there is literally not much of a difference at all. Um I, some, I have clients who, uh, you know, who come to me for even like health reasons, you know, just to improve their health a bit better in regards to, um, you know, some of them, you know, they, they want to be, they're pre-diabetes, diabetes, um, you know, got some people who just want to, you know, help improve their fertility and they know they're ready, their, their health is in a bad place, their nutrition is, they just don't really, they are not getting enough um, nutrients, they're not, you know, having a good balance of, of meals and so on. I just want to understand that a bit better. Um, they all still revolve around actually starting to learn what they actually eat, you know, in a day to day and, you know, how to actually ensure that, you know, you've got a balance of those calories, not just, you know, this, okay, you know, if, if maybe I cut out carbs just because I want to lose weight, or maybe I, that there's too much protein, you know, that kind of stuff. But, and then also, you know, things like training as well. Even people have come to me, I've got people 60, 70 years old who, they come to me just to improve their bone density because obviously you know, that's training helps with that. Um, they still train kind of similar to my, you know, to my athletes who get ready for competition in regards to knowing that, hey, just just train, take your muscles to failure, have fun with it as well. Um, but obviously be more smart in the sense of, you know, we're not trying to just simply lift the heaviest weight in the room um, for one rep or whatever, but you know, really trying to make sure that we, you know, we break down the muscle and then have enough recovery to grow and everything. So it's, it's weird how so many people think it's so different, but yeah. it really isn't that much. And I think the main thing is it, it really is just the end goal. That is the difference. So if it's a photo shoot, there's probably a little bit more of, you know, we want to be a bit more meticulous. We want to, you know, we, we want to really like nail this because we've got the deadline and everything. Um, if it's a competition, even more so now with less, there's even a little more um, outside opinion in regards to 
but we're actually trying to present our physique to some judges. So we've got to take other stuff into consideration. We've got another big deadline, all that kind of stuff. Um, holiday, wedding, it's still a deadline. So yeah. again, it's just the goal it, that just changes it. Um, as well as, you know, what we, did you actually want from it as well? So, you know, some people with weddings, you know, it's like, oh, I just want to get to this dress size. Okay. So that's still a goal, still a time frame, all these kind of things. And it's still going to involve nutrition and training. I think the key element though is, um, and you've already said it, is mindset. And a lot of people do miss out on that. And, you know, this is something, again, I've been learning over the years. And, um, you know, one of the main things I tell all my clients is, you know, believe me when I say, what you're getting from me is you're learning from my mistakes. That's just, that's the biggest thing of it because it, you will probably agree in coaching. The number one thing is, you know, when someone comes to you, what they should be getting is that feeling of their progress being fast tracked a bit better now, because a lot of things that will probably take them off course, which are the mistakes, because you've experienced them before, or you know it with clients and so on. And with your knowledge, it just helps narrow things down better. So yeah, I think, I think that's the other key thing there, which is why mindset is such a big part of this. And well, everything else is pretty similar. And like you said, some people call it average Joe. Some people call it general population client, all that kind of stuff. Again, it's just a title. It's still a human yeah. being who, who has um, a goal in mind. They've got a passion for something, but they're not too sure about how to go about it. And also not even too sure about how big the passion is because you mentioned the comp competitors some of my competitive comp competing clients they're not like completely new i've been working with them for a while now and the passion's just grown to hey, i want to give this a try i want to see yeah. what this is like actually you know so yeah that's the thing is like like because obviously we're going to dabble into kind of uh obviously post deadlines and things like that as well but it you you nailed it on the head there that actually like no matter what goal you're going towards there is a deadline of some format and the process is exactly the same so it's like right we need to be starting to like if you just want to get in shape for a summer holiday or something like that yeah there can be more flexibility 100 because like you don't need to be turned inside out shredded sort of thing you might just want to have some little abs popping through or you might want to feel tighter in that dress sort of thing anything along those lines but the process is exactly the same like no no matter what no matter if you're a professional athlete or whatever it is it's like monitor your steps, sleep well, hydrate well, train hard, eat what you need to eat. And that is literally it. I think the hardest thing, like you, there's probably, there's a lot of, it pops up all the time. I think we've had this discussion in the past. People are just like, oh, just go a calorie deficit. Like that doesn't sort anyone's fucking problem out. That doesn't help anyone. Well, what does that mean? It's like, cause if you said like, I wouldn't like, to be honest, I wouldn't even know my maintenance calories right now. So if someone says go calorie deficit, I'm like, I don't know what fucking, I don't even know what fucking number that is. Do you know what I mean? So it's like people just throw these quick answers around, like, do I need to do this, this, and this? But actually, like, it's a very simple, to drop body fat to build muscle is a very simple formula. It's a very, very simple formula. But I think people just like, well, influence, whatever it may be, just earn a lot of money out of just complicating it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that your approach with coaching would just go in and be like, actually, we just need to do this, this, and this, and just be consistent with it. But like what you said is what most people struggle with is they don't believe they can. And they don't believe that they're capable of doing this. And they think they have to train six days a week, eat chicken, rice and broccoli and do all this sort of stuff. When actually, like you really don't. The yeah. biggest thing that people struggle with is consistency, motivation and actually lacking self-belief and self-awareness. Yeah. So actually as coaches, we focus on that first before we do training nutrition half the time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it is like um there's different it, it, there's different levels of like understanding what is needed for an ind individual which is why again like you said we can't just keep saying to everyone there's a one size fits all it's, it's not that case I, how i can have a new client who where it really is just the nutrition side of things we just need to really nail and uh, brush up on and really educate them on I have some individuals where no it's actually the mindset i really need to there's a lot of roadblocks here a lot of myths i need to really like de like really like what's it called i need to destroy it just so, so they can understand the bigger picture here um and again it's what i would i went through you know i'm 35 years old i'm not young uh and my fat loss journey started when i was a teenager you know trying to understand what needs to be done i did the whole herbal life diet juice diets all these crazy things i did the cardio till you die all that kind of stuff you know it's um 
you know, it's all mistakes I've went through. And then to the point where I started learning about the science of things and also learning from other experienced people, I too was like, this can't be right. No, it's a lie. This can't be true because you're making this sound a lot easier than it's meant to be. And then also certain things where you're like, no, that seems too hard too as well. And it's, we've all been there, you know, and I completely understand it. And then you touched on it again, which is, you know, some people feel they can't do it. And that's another thing, like, again, it's, it's funny because I, I still do it to other things, you know, in regards to, it's not to do with fitness and health, but I have things where, you know, automatic, I would just be like, nope, I, I ain't got it. I ain't got the discipline for that. But then when I'm talking to my new clients, I sometimes have to remind them, you know, especially in consultation calls, they're like, yeah, I'm not too sure if I have the discipline for this yet. And I have to remind them. So do you think there's actually a point where you're just magically going to have this discipline and you're like, let's do this now? Or is it actually maybe you work on something and then actually the discipline gets, you know, with yeah. gets built in? And that's actually what it's all about. It's not, and as weird because we know this is so many other things, but then when it comes to, you know, something like health, fitness, body composition, nutrition, training, we just somehow feel like, no, this, this doesn't apply. And I always like to, like to give real life situations in comparison here. Um, not, it's not direct comparison, but just to remind people of how, you know, again, this is about how you deal with things in the moment and what you do from there. You, you have a partner, you have a baby, you're going to have to learn to be a parent. There is no, I have been perfectly placed into the situation now to be a parent. I yeah. already know what it's going to take. I already know how to deal with this, know how to deal with that. This, if, if this comes out, it comes out of nowhere. I know how to deal with that too. If this unplanned, uncontrollable event happens, I know exactly when I what to do there. I've literally got the cheat code for parenting. No parent has ever said that. And, you know, again, it's more, even some have been more thrusted into it than more other people where they were just so not expecting this, but yet they have to step up and do it. And, you know, just because, you know, it's that feeling of I've got to do this no matter what. I feel like some people are scared or just feel like it's just almost rude to put that kind of scenario towards your own personal goal. And yeah. why can't it be, I got to do this. Like, you know, I've really got to give it some, some focus here. Why can't it be that? Why has it got to be excused as, you know, oh, you're being selfish. You're thinking about your own goal. You're taking care of your own health. You're taking care of yourself here. Um, and I feel like that's always the number one thing with a lot of people I have to break through in understanding that it's not about you're perfectly going to be ready to do this. It's about, no, I'm actually going to now switch this mindset to I'm really going to give this a go. I'm really going to try and understand how this is going to work for me. And I'm really going to take things on Remember that whatever's out of my control, I can't control. But whatever I can control, I'm just going to do my best every day to try and do it as best as possible. And with our team, we call it consistency over perfection. We're not trying to be perfect. We just want to make sure if I did 40% today, tomorrow I'm doing 40% again, minimum. I'm doing it again, continuously, continuously. Then when I can throw in an extra 5%, you know, it came out of nowhere, you know, like I'll remind them, did you notice that you did this now? You don't, you normally you don't do that. You know, you just said you prepped for three days in advance. You cooked your, you know, you decided to cook extra chicken. You know, you decided to tell people, um, yeah, sure. I'll come to that social. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to have two drinks and then um, I'm probably going to skip dessert. You know, just little things like that. That's an extra 2%, 4%. And that's how you just get better and better with things. And people always forget because you're doing that correctly, because us coaches are now making sure that you, you've got the right direction just 40, 50% is progress. It's going to be more oh, progress God. than yeah. what they've been doing before, which is, you know, slam the, you know, just literally pedal to the metal, right? Let's drop everything calorie wise and just see what happens for one week, two weeks. And before you know it, yeah, rebound. Yeah, all that crazy stuff. And you're it's, not going anywhere. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you said it because I feel like people treat themselves, fitness, their own health and things like that. Uh, at such a fast pace at such a rush like what like what's the rush and I refer to this I'm like you go to university for three years to get a degree you go to minimum <laughs> minimum that's it or yeah exactly if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer you're looking at seven years to ten years plus to actually just do your job hmm. so why are you treating your health and your fitness any differently yeah. why are you trying to get the results tomorrow and things like that because everyone knows that that's not real i think when people do that they know that's not sustainable it's not doable so 
I would ask the question, why do you feel like you have to rush and do this? Is it because you've neglected the last five years of your life or you've neglected yourself for X amount of times? Okay, yeah. cool. So how does that impact your life? Being in the shape you are now, how do you feel now? How does that impact your life? Yeah. And then in six months time, if you're in the same position now, how would that make you feel in six months time? Yeah. Pretty crap. So like you say, if we go back to literally like doing one thing every day, that can you can start to build the habits build the routine then you become consistent and then you're one of these consistent people oh and when you're consistent you get classed as oh you're so disciplined sort of thing and yeah, like, you, you get the title that you yeah. thought would never actually make sense but now it's people telling you you're like no i'm not <laughs> that's literally yeah. it's like if people say it's like it just gets embedded to into you and i think the reason why a lot of athletes or whatever it may be or even if you look at kind of like people higher education like doctors and lawyers things like that the reason I think a lot of the time they're very successful is purely because over time their career or their fitness or their athletic career has taught them to be consistent and disciplined and then all that does is that reflects onto the rest of their life yeah. and I think anyone that's listening to this can actually probably take some time away and actually focus on yourself a lot more like I always use the quote like um, when a plane crashes, they always tell you to put your own oxygen mask on first. And there's a yeah. reason for it. Like, if you can't look after yourself, you can't help someone else. Yeah. So if you are a parent, like you literally said it, like, or if you're going to be a parent, I'm like, you better start looking after yourself. You better start going to bed. So the baby can go to have a bedtime routine, you better start eating well. So then you can feed your family correctly. If you start putting good food into your body, you start to look and feel better. This is going to reflect into your career, into your personal life, relationships, everything like that. Like, do you want to have sex with the lights on instead of turning them off all the time? I'm like, it's a lot better. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, well, actually, like, if you feel confident in your body, you'll do that. That's it. Yeah. So, but no, like, I know, I know that you're massive on like mindset and everything like that as well. And I think what I love as well about you is that I think we spoke in all the lockdowns, to be fair, and you were so composed and present. And I was that person who was like, oh, fuck, I'm struggling a little bit, generally struggling. And I read, um, have you read The Happy Sexy Millionaire? No, I haven't, but I've heard, I've heard a lot about it, though. So there's a section in that, and I literally thought of you. Apparently, it's, it says it's something like 80 to 90% of people that are religious are happier. And you know what? I was like, light bulb moment. I was like, it's so fucking true. Because it's almost like the constant grounding and the family and things like that. Like you never feel alone. You always feel like you have support and care and things like that. And I literally thought of you then, cause you're like, you're quite big into like, you're, you're very Christian, aren't you? Like into the, you go to church all the time and things like that. Like you're big and that sort of style of things, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's quite simple. And like, even you notice because anyone around me will notice and it's, it's always number one priority is my relationship with God. That is number one. And it's funny you just thought about that quote. I need to probably read this now because that is something that, um, again, it would pretty much resonate a lot with a lot of Christians because it's the best way I can put it is it is kind of a cheat code in life because I'm no matter what, like even the bodybuilding competition I, I do, you know, even this, you know, my coaching, everything, you know, all these things, no matter what, it, I always remember all that matters is him. That is literally it. And as long as I can fall back on him and I put him first and everything, nothing else really matters. It just, I know it sounds like it's crazy, but I can literally do that. And that's why with the lockdowns, all the crazy stuff that don't get me wrong, it threw me off a lot, like a lot of scary moments as well. Um, but what pulled me through was first of all, my wife reminded me of these things as well. And then obviously, because again, with her being such a strong, devout Christian as well, she really does channel me even better as well. Um, and we really help help each other with this, but also me remembering things or just because I wake up every morning and I read the Bible first. It's so weird, but like certain things on that day, I will read that I need to hear specifically to the point where on prep seven days out, I had a COVID scare and I was literally just like, it's over. That's it. I'm going to, it means I'm, I'm going to do this test. It's going to say positive. I'm all this prep, everything, all this time. It's not happening. I'm not stepping on stage. I was freaking out. You know, I was, it was, it was just so, I was acting like, you know, life is over, that kind of thing. And literally in that moment, again, I got reminded of another passage I've, re I've read somewhere that just reminded me that, look, 
all promises from God are never empty. And that reminded me because the only reason I did this competition this year was because I was like literally one day, 18 weeks ago praying. And then it was just like, I heard something say, look, mate, do the show. I'm like, I'm not ready. There's been 18 months lockdown, whatever, you know, this is not happening. There's no way I have enough muscle. I'm going to go on stage again and be a laughing stock. No, it's not happening. But I was like, no, do the show to the point where two weeks out, finally I gave in and registered. I never, I never actually registered for the show all that time. <laughs> I was great. just, I was just like fat loss. I'm fat loss phase, fat loss phase, fat loss phase. We'll see what happens. Registered two weeks out. And then immediately after one week later, I got this COVID scare. I was like, oh gosh, now come on now. Clearly I was just losing my mind. Nobody spoke to me. This is crazy. But then that passage came, it's just reminding me that no promise for God is empty. And I was like, all right. So I guess he's saying to me, if I really did speak to you, there's no way this COVID test is going to say you're positive. And then in that moment, again, I was like, okay, relax. It's, it's all right. Check the test. Negative. I was like, it's crazy. Okay. I guess it's happening. Um, obviously I just had the flu. So it's now the case. Of <laughs> hopefully, you know, I'm going to feel all right. That's, uh, be, that's fine. Like, he, he timed it well for you. That's all it was. It's it. like, we won't get it now. We'll get it in two weeks time. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. So again, it was like, you know, I had the flu. So now I was just worried that, you know, hopefully I'm not, I'm going into peak week here, sick, you know, hopefully I'll be well in time. But again, just day by day, little things and, you know, things just started coming together. And more and more, I was just doing less of stressing myself on things that, you know, it's just not, my, not in my control. And just remembering that, look, you know, at the end of the day, this is not about like saying bodybuilding is my life. It's, or, you know, it's going to be number one. It is God, then my wife, my family, my business, then it's my bodybuilding career. That's how it is for me. And remembering these things, staying grounded in that, you know, really does help me. Um, you know, now how do I try and do, you know, think about this with my clients? It's not like, no, 100%, you know, I'm like, you have to be a Christian. This is not, no, it's more like just reminding them as well. You know, yes, the health and fitness, you now want to take this on. We're going to, you know, learn a bit more how we can, you know, try and work this into your lifestyle and everything, but also reminding them, don't, believe all this hype about this is hardcore this isn't you know this is for the only the do or dies like you gotta like take it to the next level meticulous you can't flexible dieting what is that that is ridiculous man you gotta be like like you gotta be like only chicken and broccoli and all that kind of stuff you know and just remember like you know if that was the case then really and truly then you know people will understand that there's, there's an elite level of, of humans and then there's everybody else because apparently the the, the dieters and the bodybuilders out there and the fitness fanatics are the, the elite level, but yeah. clearly that's not the case. <laughs> and, and again, that just comes from just remembering that we don't, as much as everybody wants to try and think about being better than someone, it really doesn't make that difference in life because you've heard it before. You've heard the, the, the richest guy in the room who's the saddest guy in the room. You've heard of the poorest guy in the room being the happiest guy in the room. You know, it's like, well, what's the rule here? What is going on? I think the number one things people forget it's not about thinking that all these little things we do here are going to be 100% the, 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 the thing that defines you, you know, and, and I, it's tough for people to hear when I say this, but, but bodybuilding doesn't define me, you know, coaching doesn't define me. I'm sorry, but to me, it doesn't, you know, I can't be living my life thinking that this is the only things that are going to define me uh, in life. For me, it's a bigger thing. And I just try and remind like my clients, there's got to be something bigger than this. Because trust me, when you have that understood, it really helps you with everything else you do in life. You know, it helps you to just go, yes, I can do this. I can do that. I can do this as well. And it's not about feeling that I just got to put everything above everything else. And I'm going to start drowning underneath it. Because again, like you just, I've just said right there, there's so many things that can challenge those passions. And, you know, if bodybuilding was my be all and end all, the amount of times I would lose my mind because honestly, it's not been oh, perfect. It has not been perfect at all. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's, sorry, I went on a bit there, but yeah. No, it's you're good, man. But th that's, it's, re it's, that's yeah. real life stuff, man. Because yeah. like, the thing is like, yeah, like me and you take it seriously, training, things like that, whatever it may be. But I think we can both say that we're very, you're, you're very much more like, I look up to you from this point of view, like, you're extremely grounded and you're extremely present. And like you said, like you are you, that is it. There is a lot of, we live in this world where our jobs are technically social media. We're recording a podcast right now and, and people get absorbed into people's worlds and thinking they need to be doing this. They need to be doing that, but forgetting all about themselves. 
but like completely thinking like actually you start to morph into these different characteristics and things like that and I was talking to um I was talking to someone the other day and it was like you go into a gym now and it's everyone wearing the same clothing whether that's trained by JP and everyone's wearing Vibrams and things like that and I'm like it's this trend that's coming down and it's like there's nothing wrong with it at all but I would just challenge is that you sort of thing and it is doing little things like it, you nailed it like for me it's just journaling and just kind of just taking a step back looking around and being like I'm grateful a lot more like that's one thing I've started to do a lot more like I was training legs the other day um and the guy was like oh, I'm having a bad session I was like dude and I don't know why like there was like a person that like roll past in a wheelchair with one leg and I was like dude we're training legs like there's people out there that can't walk and things like that and like sometimes you need to take a step back and give yourself a bit of a shake like actually you're in a good position and like we could ramble a lot about kind of the mindset side of things but you kind of get <laughs> kind of get the point sort of thing like yeah. it is just staying very humble to who you are and if you do need to take like time away and if you do need to just switch things off to kind of just connect with your own thoughts I would do that like yeah. I've started doing it in the mornings like, I do my morning walk now before I used to listen to a, an audiobook and now I thought actually, I actually just don't want to listen to an audiobook because actually I just like to look around and just be in that moment because yeah. a lot of good thoughts come when you get in your own heads people are scared to do that but I promise you if you challenge yourself to do that it's fucking cool like it's yeah. cool that's how your best ideas pop from yeah but, Bring and, it. And again, I'm not the best of this too. I mean, just again, just the other day, my, my wife reminds me of how I need to just make sure I'm in the moment because sometimes I'm just really all like the business, you know, I got to be so much uh, trying to do so much here because I got, again, this passion for where I want it to go and everything. And, you know, after the competition, it was my wife's birthday. We went away to like a spa, like a spa thing for the few days. And, you know, again, she was just reminding me like, you know, you need to to just be in it you know because I was just about I was dying to be on my phone to just check on this check on that and I was like switch off like you yeah. can do that you know that kind of thing so again me and you we're not perfect at this either we're still <laughs> learning we're probably, we're probably the worst at it <laughs> That's it there. and then again even back to the training thing like you need those moments to remember to just be, be be thankful be grateful there's a reason why I put that in my in my client check-ins on my in the form you know like three things you're, you're grateful for you know I need to do that as well I need to remember those kind of things yeah. um and then on the flip side we're not saying to people who are you know really like competitors or you know training for you know for, the, for those kind of goals there we're not saying no you know you shouldn't train and really push yourself or anything no it's just that every once in a while you do need that um because again even if it's, it's even in the bible it says you got to work like like I, I'm your boss. Like God even says that, which is why even people, when they say they hate a job or whatever, it's like, God doesn't care, man. If you're in a position to be working for someone, you better work like it's I'm your boss. And yeah. if you're saying you have a passion for this in bodybuilding and every day it's, oh, I'm not having a great day. I'm not doing it. That's a bit different, you know, to where the day where you need to have that reflection and go, I'm thankful to where there's days where, you know, you need to push and work, you know, you know, you've just been, coasting you've not been doing things as well and again that's the other side of coaching with all my clients from your so-called general population to the athlete there's that balance I've got some general population clients who are more gone ho they just want to do everything 100 miles per hour I've got to like, calm them down a bit you know yeah. they're more than the athlete sometimes you know I've got some athletes where you know I've got to try and you know, get them to do some of that you know kind of thing I really start going for it more they're being way too cautious in regards to their training so again, this is why I tell people, trust me, there is no big difference apart from the actual goal itself. And um, just reminding people that it's not cases there is just one size fit all. You must be the guy who's so thankful every day and doesn't want to do anything for himself. It's just, no, because the Bible says it again. I do want you to have a passion. I do want you to work for things. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't put these in front of you. It's simple as. I'm not that evil. It's not, it's yeah, not like yeah. I mean, I'm going to tempt you with, oh, here you go. Like, here's some great <laughs> stuff here. I put you in this world, you know, and uh, I just want you to be here to suffer. That's why I want yeah. you to know. Yeah, that sounds oh, great. <laughs> if, if there's a reason why certain things, you know, give you interest, yeah, just see what it's about. Like, why, why am I interested in bodybuilding? Why am I interested in health and fitness? Why do I follow so many fitness people? This is that, you know. Yeah, look into it. Why not? You know, it might be something you can work on a bit on. If it's not, that's fine. You know, because I think time is something people get again confused with so much. You know, they always feel there's not enough. 
And I think like you, you touched on before, health and fitness, why is there such a big short-term goal for people? I, I always tell people, people think it's like, it's a video game, complete it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's it, there's, there's an end. I beat the big boss, it's done. Yeah. I'll be, this is till I'm, I'm until when, whenever, like I could be doing, going gym at 80 for all I know, who knows what's yeah, going to happen it. in the future. It's like, you know, whatever, I might have some cheeky little photo shoot at 70, just for fun, just to see what's happening. I'm know? so holding you to that. That's going to be great. <laughs> I see that. Oh gosh, I just put it out there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's it. We'll, we'll re-release this in like, what, 40 years time plus. <laughs> there you go, there you go. My wife will be happy because she always says, you know, I better have abs at 70, so there you go. <laughs> I think for you, you'll be fine with that. So it's cool. But no, let's kind of look, um, so let's kind of go, obviously we coach a lot of fat loss and things like that. So we'll bounce like one off each. So five, regardless, it doesn't even matter. Like if you're, mm-hmm. if you're going into your, a show, if you want to get into photo shoot shape, if you want to just feel more confident, go to the beach, take your top off, put a dress on, whatever that is, whatever your goal is, five tips, you mm-hmm. go first, you lead. Oh, put me on the spot there, didn't you? Five, five. <laughs> Right. Um, so five things that you need to have in place, like five tips. Yeah, five um, things. I think the first one is um, making sure you've actually done research going into that goal. So um, it's not just a case, all right, photo shoot, you know, or holiday, whatever, or even competition. Now that's it. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to do this. Is have you done research into it? So do you you, you know fully what you're going into. Um, uh, so like for example, competing something I've been talking about a lot um, because I feel like, again, a lot of people where they are disappointed in what happened, you know, they always point the finger at the judges kind of thing. And I feel like it's strange because people need to understand that is the whole point of bodybuilding. It's, it's bad as some people might say it's bad, but uh, sorry, my camera's going crazy here. But yeah, some people might say it's bad, but at the end of the day, it is a, a sport where the judges define who they believe looked better on the day in their eyes. <laughs> Yeah. So it's crazy, but hey, do the research in that. And if that already is a red flag for you, then you probably shouldn't even be doing it. So um, I think number one is research. Number two is um, mindset. Like we keep talking about it. You know, it's not that just the mindset of, OK, who am I going into this? And what am I like? What am I going to identify myself as? You know, what, what, what's this going to mean for me later on down the line? But also it's just like a case of, okay, I'm going into this, but what do I want to make sure I keep as, uh, you know, non-negotiable? What do I make sure is, is still, you know, I'm still open to understand and learn about, you know, that kind of thing. And that can mean anything to you. Um, the third one is, and it's not just because we're coaches, but you got to work with someone. If you don't know what you're doing, work with someone. Um, that's a key thing there. And then now trying to get into the more nitty gritty because I know people love the, the, the one thing here and there. They want to the, hear the facts. The magic, <laughs> the magic tip, you know, that key thing, that major key, that's, that's the secret. You know, like, you know, when like people think it's water, it's this and that, you know, that kind of thing. I'll say the two things there is, um, I think it's about understanding, like finding an approach that, you know, in regards to your diet, you know, nutrition, you know, find an approach that would actually fit in with your lifestyle because even with short-term goals, like most of the time they still don't, it still doesn't work if it's something that just that you can't do for more than three weeks, four weeks, you know, it's, yeah. you got to find some that approach that works into your lifestyle and whatever that lifestyle is, it could be anything, you know, literally um, for like, like nurses and doctors, like intermittent fasting could be perfect for them, you know, that kind of thing, you know, because they're on their feet, no time to eat for so many hours and then they only got a small window to eat, then Hey, maybe, maybe that's perfect there um and then you know all those kind of things so yeah like i said nutrition trying to find trying to understand, like find an approach that actually works for you the other last one is um what i say is hey you say it i hate to say it because i feel like people think this is my magic thing but i really do think sleep is something that is overly underestimated um yeah. And when I say sleep, I don't mean, oh, eight hours in muster, this is that, but oh, I just literally mean like, even if it's just five hours, you can get in, make sure you get in the five hours, like make sure it's a good quality five hours, you know, um, when I say that, I mean, like, is your room cool? Um, you know, it's not, it's that, like that good temperature. Do you actually have a pre-bed routine or is it just literally once that, that, that program finishes, I'm going to rush into bed and then try and see if I can fall asleep while I'm still checking things on my phone, you know? 
uh, that word again, discipline, are you actually like, okay, I'm going to bed at this time. Did you actually do that? That kind of thing. So yeah, sleep is one of them. You could ask me this question again next week. I'll have another five for you. But Yeah, that's it. You, <laughs> you know what's funny as well? Because people, loads of people ask me, oh, why did I move here? And like things like that. And it's funny because obviously I came into like, November for two weeks. And you know what it was? I slept for two weeks. <laughs> it's because I had insomnia for like almost like two years, pretty much. Um, and because of anxiety and things like that. And I remember I came here and I slept like six, seven hours every night. Didn't wake up. And do you know what? That was it. I was just like, I'm fucking moving. There. Like generally didn't even think about anything else. I was just like, it was a good environment <laughs> and I slept well. <laughs> so stupid. I move halfway around the world because you slept well. But generally, like if anyone struggles with their sleep and they get a good night's sleep, you'll realize how fucking good you feel when you sleep. Oh, it's a game changer. That, you nuts. actually start the day off right. <laughs> that's yeah, that's it. Instead of waking up feeling like a bag of shit, pretty much. Like, that's it. Um, cool. Let me give five. I'll be short and sweet. Very similar. So I would go with start simple so start simple by regardless if whatever you're doing for your fat loss journey even as competitive bodybuilders the first kind of two weeks like right you have to be ready in this certain time first two weeks to three weeks you don't do much make sure you get your steps in make sure you drink enough water start being a bit more accurate with things eat eat kind of three four meals every day that's literally it it's all you start to do just become a bit more regimented sort of thing um, and this applies to anything. You could be like, right, let me just get a bit more consistent at walking. Let me drink some more water, things like that. Those little things will go so far. Um, number two, I think, is to do things like mindset things. I think I'm always going to push journaling or something along those lines. Put that, I'm a huge advocate of morning routines. So the first half an hour of your day when you wake up, what do you do in the first half an hour of your day? I think that should be all prioritized around you and bettering your day. So for me, journal hydration supplements make my bed whatever it may be and it's just like okay cool i've done i've achieved little things and as soon as you've done that that role like the momentum goes into the rest of the day so i think if you can set yourself up for the first half an hour of the day that'll make a massive impact to to, like to to the week even whether that's like cook a meal get prepare for some lunch it'll take you 10 minutes sort of thing whatever that may be um Number three, I'll always say, yep, yeah, work with a coach. doesn't have to be us. It doesn't have to be I don't know, anyone, right? But what I've learned from spending, I've had coaches since I was 14 years old from being a competitive athlete in kayaking and vice versa all the way up until now. Like I've had a coach every second of the way. And again, like I've invested money. Like we've been, we, me and Josh met um, at the Muscle Mentor Seminar. So we invested into our education and things like that. So we've gone to, everything like just trying to learn and things like that and like like as soon as you get a good coach like generally you bypass so much stuff like we wouldn't be in the position where we were if we didn't have coaches we'd still be like struggling with certain periods we're like oh like when do we eat like what do we do sort of thing it's only because someone says do this try this if it doesn't work cool we change it around a little bit that's literally it so we're learning from their mistakes and they're learning from other mistakes and people like that and always just learning from someone that's better than you it's as simple as don't take it as an intimidation like I'll be like, I'll be the first person to like, Josh is super fucking strong at pulling from the ground. So I'm just going to copy what the fuck he does. Like, <laughs> as simple as like, I don't need to try and be unique. I'm like, no, I'm just going to do what he does. Very simple approach. That's it. But then I don't think I'm not doing that with somebody else. Yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> um, that was, was that three? Yeah. Three. That's three. Yeah. Four. I would say environment. So mm, yeah, yeah. putting yourself in a good environment, I think. I've had it a lot with clients pop up where a lot of them have done photo shoots recently. And when they get really focused on themselves, they start to realize who is very supportive in their life and who isn't. And honestly, a lot of the time this comes down to family and very close friends because you spend a lot of time with them. Mm. They're not understanding and things like that. They don't really understand what's going on. Potentially mm. you haven't explained it well enough. Mm -hmm. So maybe you should start explaining what you're doing and things like that. And you have to tell them this is what to expect. But a lot of the time I've noticed that I noticed that a lot in English culture, for sure. It's like people want to bring each other down and there's a really good thing. So I didn't know. So apparently crabs do this. If you put loads of crabs in a bucket and one, they all start to crawl out, they will pull the top one down <laughs> and not let it out the bucket. Like generally, like it's fucking weird, but they will not let the other one out. 
Yeah. So when you're trying I'm not to, doing it, they're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, literally. So when someone's trying to progress and someone's on you're trying to better yourself, make sure you haven't got any crabs. <laughs> like make sure you haven't got any pe- <laughs> make sure you haven't got any people that are bringing you down. And that's like and it's the same when you even like if you're going into a gym environment, make sure that's an environment you want to step into three, four times a week. Like I know that you're training up a uh is it uh where are you trying BB where is it called? Oh, um, so I'm in Genesis and Kings. At the yeah. moment, so. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So like you're in two of the best gyms in the UK and like you have to make the effort to travel to them and things like that. Like generally do that because you're putting yourself into good environment. It doesn't have to be the gym. It could be like, like it, it could be just like, make sure you don't see this family member every week. Maybe see them every two weeks and maybe spend half a day with them instead of a day with them. Reduce your time. It doesn't mean you don't love them. You don't like them. But I know I have family members where I'm like, I'll have half a day with you here, but then I need to step away sort of thing. Yeah. So no, and, and, and I think the key thing here, people, is we're not saying your family are crabs or anything here. Like, <laughs> we're not saying that, but you just touching it there is, and again, this is similar to, to food in regards to, you know, your triggers. So, you know, if when you're focusing on this goal, there are certain people that you love who are in your life, it's not that you're saying you hate them or anything, but you just know that, in this moment, there could be someone who potentially is not actually going to be the support you need. Not their fault, but that's just the way it is. Yeah. And like you just said again at the beginning, it doesn't mean blank them and be rude to them or whatever. No, it's just like, hey, look, I'm doing this again. You know how it is. You know, I can't be going out every night with you. I know we, we do this, but right now I can't do that. You know, yeah. that's the way it is. But trust me, as soon as this is done... I'm back with you. This is how it is, you know? And I'm sure there's a reason why they're your good friend or your family and they'll be, you know, like, yeah, that's cool, that's fine. And then now it's on you because then if if during a prep, you're then trying to go over, you heard there's a party going and like, oh, should I go? And then you're going to try and blame them that, you know, they're the ones who, you know, they're the influencers yeah, or whatever. It's like, mate, you went there. You remember, you yeah. know, so why are you going there? So yeah, like, I, I'm, yeah, 100% agree with it. And I'm just making it clear to people, we're not trying to say, point the finger at them. No, no, still, never. I would point the, your own accountability. It's still yeah, I would you. point the finger more at you. Yeah, like, it's still your own accountability. Like, I, I've got I mean, I've got a mother-in-law and my own mother who are amazing cooks, and I love their food. <laughs> I love their food, you know? I love their food. And now, you know, but, you know, every once in a while, you know, when I was on prep, I just had to remind them, you know, I'm so sorry, I can't come, you know, to the, or... I'm going to come, but I can't do this. Or yes, I can have that. I can do this. You know, but it's the way it is. I'm just like, and as much as, even though it doesn't matter, every five minutes, it's like, come on, take this. Take. I'm like, I love you, but you know, I, yeah, I yeah. don't worry. It's nearly done. I will be back. I got a yeah. thing. But that's also the thing to remember, like a fat loss journey isn't permanent. So yeah. we're talking like generally, like no matter, no, I say no matter, no matter what your starting position is, guarantee you six months, like no matter if you are 30 stone and you've abused your body for 10 years and things like that, if you knuckle down for six months, regardless of where you start point, you'd be in a very, very different position. Very so we're not saying like you have to like also in six months that like, you can go out. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. But we're yeah. just saying like six months to better the rest of your life. That's what we're trying to say. Yeah. Um, and I think coming on to like a fifth point would be, I want to keep it away from almost nutrition and training. So like yeah. responsibility. I think the biggest thing that I, 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 maybe it was a, like, I don't know, probably a lot's changed, like my mindset since being here. So maybe let's say like eight months ago, as soon as you take full responsibility of everything that happens in your life, yeah. shit starts to open up. Like if something goes well, it's your fault. If this goes well, it's your fault. If you decide to eat this, it's your fault. Not as a negative concept, but like if you take full responsibility of the reason I'm in this situation is because I did this. I like generally, it's like Josh said, it was like, if someone invites you to a party, you can say no. Having the power to say no is a very powerful thing. And when you say yes, like if Josh says, come train with me, I'll be like, yes. Like no matter if I was like, if he said in two weeks time, like, dude, look, like we've got a mega session going down, fly here. I, do you know what? I would, that's the thing. Like I generally would because the opportunity and what I would get from that is too great. So take full responsibility like generally of yourself and your life because at the end of the day no matter if your parents want you to be doctors lawyers or you feel like you have to do this career option this is your life you're living it you were born and you will die 
So do you want to end your life having that regret of not kind of taking a bit of responsibility for th certain things and certain actions? A bit deep, but generally like that sort of stuff will help you out massively, 100%. 100%. No, no, again, um, and again, completely understand those and they're all key things there. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you ask us again next week we'll probably change them up a bit <laughs> yeah yeah that's literally it that's it there but yeah um Easy. What, what, was, what was the other one you wanted was it the oh yeah so, one you wanted to go yeah, so obviously there? um we'll just do we'll do five but we'll bounce them back and forth so like you go i go sort of thing um mm -hmm. so obviously when you've achieved your goal so right now we told you how to achieve it technically the, the five things 10 things you need to do yeah. so what do we do when you achieve that goal do you want to start Yes. Uh, so I've already answered one of them. I've already said one of them, which is make sure you already have an idea before you actually achieve the goal. So um, very simple, um, because obviously something I've just done recently. Um, so yeah, the goal for me was to step on a natural bodybuilding show, um, a natural bodybuilding competition, uh, step on the stage. Um, from 2017, I knew this is what I wanted to do. Did I know it was going to be 2021? Did I know it was going to be 2020, 2019, I didn't know yet, but I just knew that was the next goal, as well as the fact that I wanted to be in the, in the top five. I wanted to place in the next show, basically. That was the number one goal. That was what I was training for. And yeah, I knew that. However, along the way, I was always still thinking about, you know, what would happen afterwards? If I actually do place, you know, this is what I'm training for. What would I actually be doing afterwards? And as I was training, you know, off season, you know, all these different things, the mini cuts, the going to shows to learn about the, the competition, going to the, the, the two federations I was looking at, BNBF and UK FBA, to watching their updates and everything, to going to talk to some of these people, network with them as well, other competitors, ones who've gone from novices to pros, newcomers, all, all of them, that, that kind of stuff. Through all of that, I was also understanding, that, okay, you know, no matter what happens next time I compete, I think I'll be doing it again after that. You know, it won't be a case of I'm just going to do it. I place, then I'm gone. No, I think this is something I actually enjoy and will always be doing. It's like, I'll see it as my little cherry on top when it comes to my fitness and health, my own personal fitness and health. Um, so yeah, it's that the number one thing was, you know, just have an idea of what will happen next. And for me, um, it got clearer as I got into this prep as well, which was knowing I knew I was getting ready for this show um, to obviously place, but also my goal was to place and to just see where I'm at. And then after that, I know that I'm going into an off season because I already know that to hang in the next level, which is the top amateurs in my category, which is over 80 kg makes me a heavyweight. I need a bit more on the frame. So um, to, 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 ma to match up with these guys, I need more present, you know, more work on posing, all these kind of things. But Basically, I didn't want to rush this. So I knew that, you know, after I've done the show, as long, you know, no matter what happens there, I know that I've got to, you know, get into that off season. So even though if I did win, you know, which I didn't, but even if I did win and, you know, it wouldn't have changed, I still would have been doing that, you know, going into the off season because I already knew this. I went into the prep, this was clear. Because again, things like with the COVID, not having a gym for almost 11 months, and I'm, again, I'm not saying anybody's luckier or better or whatever. No, it's just the way that situation for me. I literally had bands and a dumbbell, you know, that kind of thing. And I could have done more with that, whatever. But again, priorities in life. I'm not, I wasn't getting married, all these kind of things. I wasn't going to start buying a gym. It wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. And unfortunately, DIY skills are not that great. So <laughs> I wasn't one of those people who some amazing stuff people did. Some people Mate, built yeah, gyms, fair play. you know, fair play. Like, like some amazing stuff. And yeah, again, like that was great too. I, but my what my best was I just basically made sure I, um we called it doing the dishes in our in our <laughs> in our um, group chat with the with the clients I just made sure I did what needed to be done so if that was a hundred lunges you know with this dumbbell I'll do it you know hundred split squats whatever you know you know as much as I love deadlifting all I could do was use resistance bands and this dumbbell and just bang out 60 reps just to try and get some sort of a deadlift pump that kind of thing you know yeah. um so yeah th that kind of stuff was what needed to be done in the time but with all of that i knew that i can definitely do better you know after this show and i would like to focus more and taking advantage of that afterwards um hopefully on a high of actually placing which happens so yeah number one is actually know the goal before then um the other thing was um so is it five we're doing again 
We'll do one each. We'll do one each. Because yeah, yeah. I don't think we need five, really. But I think the main no. thing is, because I think the, that one pretty much helps. The most, the most important one is having that. So having the, yeah. the process after it, like you say, is having like, right, what I say, say, for example, you're four weeks away. You're very focused on what you want to achieve. And I think a very good coach will turn around and be like, what's the mission afterwards? Just throw in the question. Like, what do you want to, what's, what's going to happen after this? How will this impact your life? Because at the end of the day, like, regardless if you get in the best shape of your life, you win a trophy, you do an incredible photo shoot, your life isn't going to change. I'm sorry to tell you that. Like, you'll feel better and you've done a massive conflict, but your life will not change. So what's going to allow you to keep progressing in life? And it is just always setting little goals. Like, I think people think our goals are massive. I'm like, we get shredded. We get big, we get shredded, we get big. That's literally what we do. So it's yeah. like, mine are a little bit different this time. I'm going, to, I'm going to try and keep in good shape for about a month just to mm -hmm. do a lot of photo shoots, a lot of stuff in the UK. Yeah. And then I'm just going to get fat again in a controlled yeah. manner. Yeah. Um, but that's literally yeah. it. And I think, I think it, a lot of it comes down to is like, you could do like, well, probably that's the only thing, isn't it? To be honest, I said five things, but it's probably the only thing. <laughs> like, but, no, but no, and again, you've touched on this, another key thing there because like I said, I was just giving my example but they're, they're also competitors who, you know, you're wondering like how the hell, like they won the show, they won the overall, they, everybody's like, this is a great prospect, but that was the only show they ever did. And people are like, how the hell? And they're like at peace with it. That's because little did you know that their own post goal, you know, their own focus was, they realized actually, no matter what happens here, I want to focus on that career. I wanted to focus on this. That was it. And that was what I'll be happy with. So I don't care you throw the trophies at me, the money at me, the fact that I've got a child, you know, he's saying this is for me. Unfortunately, I, it doesn't define me and it, I don't identify with it. Yeah. That's the way it is. And again, that's why that person will never regret they didn't do that you know and that's again this is why some people need to understand like that's the the power of actually having that time to think about what is next we're not saying it has to be to do more shows it has to do no, more fans. Not or okay i did holiday not to do photo shoot i did photo shoot after the competition no no one said that we just wanted to have that let's have that conversation let's figure it out and like i keep using that word I, what how do you identify yourself like what is what is happening here even for the first first consultation call oh you want a fat loss okay well okay how do you identify yourself as you know someone who's had that fat loss you lost you lose 15 kg what, what does that mean like you said what does that actually mean that's all part of it we're just doing that again and again because that's the way we are as humans you know we we got to ensure that you know when we are working hard for something we got to make sure that look you know are we saying that this is it the be all and end all because unless you actually die afterwards <laughs> it's not the be all and end all and yeah. you know it doesn't work like that again it's not the video game competition you know, mission complete it's done game over turn off the game no it's life goes on so yeah. you're gonna be it's gonna be tough to live life if that was literally what you were saying was the the, the, the main thing here <laughs> also as well it's like you can relate to this as well like clients start and then six to eight weeks down the line things like that your goals change a lot. I shit you not. You come in with a goal and you start to tick things off a lot quicker than you think. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay, so this is very doable. Like I had no intention. Like, and like I don't know, like I do a lot of photo shoots now. No one wanted to do one. No one. No one goes in and be like, right, let's do a photo shoot. The odd few do, but no one wants to do it. It's something you're like, it's almost to what I love about photo shoots and things like that is that I think no matter what you've achieved, it's great to document it. You don't have to have abs. You don't have to have all this sort of stuff. You could literally just put a bikini on and think fucking rock it and it, things like that. It literally is like, again, it's that icing on the cake. So you've really been working hard on the cake. And then it's like, oh, I might as well do a photo shoot, I guess. You know, just, just want, you know, see how it is. Some people, again, might be like, no, I don't want to do your photo Yeah, that's shoot. it. And again, there's different things, you know, like you said, there's different things. It might just be like, oh, I'll just do a nice little big selfie thing or a video afterwards you know just to show how you know document it for myself it doesn't have to be for social media I might do it for myself that kind yeah. of thing um but yeah that's that's definitely that too you know where as things go on it's like the goals I think change the, the most you know? important thing to realize is actually when you do achieve that goal if you don't have things to look forward to afterwards you will feel very shit mm. like you it's almost like post-holiday blues when you come back you're like oh it's a bit I did it on my last shoot as well. Like I knew I had goals afterwards, but I still felt a bit like mm, for a couple of days, like mm. I was like, well, this is achieved. And now I'm going back to normal life and things like that. And what's that entail? And did that 
last 12 weeks just define me and things like that. It didn't, but mm-hmm. those are some of the thoughts that go through your head. So I think every time you do it or every time, like if you do do it again, you learn a lot about yourself. So and, it's, and, and also like, just sorry to cut you off, but no, you're good. that's, you just touched on something that's very important too. And again, something I saw a lot of in bodybuilding, which is with competing, which is a lot of people, the goal at first was, I just want to step on stage. So kind of like me in my first show and just, you know, I just want to do it. I want to step on stage. But then to some of them, it didn't happen to me, but to some of them, what happened was along the way, they actually got, it just grew so much to the point where I want to win. So yeah. two weeks out, it's now I want to win. Now they get on stage, they don't win. They don't even place. Because the goal changed, it's like such a big disappointment now, you know? And again, this is where some people need to realize, again, you can't just react on that emotion because quite a lot of these, one, these are a lot of these guys who post-show are very, very salty and negative. Um, and again, like you said, it's still, if you want, we never point fingers, but if you're going to point, it's still going to come back at you. And that's because the goal changed, all right? And just because the goal changed doesn't mean the outcome is definitely going to be what it is. But you need to understand the reason why you're upset now is because the goal changed. Don't see it as a negative. See it as the goal changed because I really actually was enjoying the process of getting ready for the show to the point where I want to experience winning. It didn't happen at this show, but maybe I need to now push on with this because clearly the passion's there. So don't then just be the person now who is like, no, hate dieting, can't believe people get ready for shows. I'm going to now spend the rest of my career focusing on social media to make sure I demonize bodybuilding <laughs> because, you know, because like, it's, it's bad for you. It's unhealthy. Da, 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 da. I went through it. So you can't tell me. Da, da, da. But it's like, hey, you, you wanted more. It's, it's, it happens, you know. Yeah. I, I didn't want more until the third show where the, the second last place Sorry, the third, all three, because I literally, until two weeks ago, I'd never experienced a first call out. So, you know, it took me three goals to realize I really wanted more from this. Yeah. So I had to then now do the work for it, you know, that kind of thing. And that's why, like, I'm so buzzing right now, because now, like I, like I literally told people, in that split second when they were deciding the runner up and the winner, at this point, I knew it was between me and him, because we were literally dead center throughout the whole show, you know. And I was looking at him and my ear was literally listening out. And in my head, a split second, what came to my head was, mate, I want first place now. Because I'd more than conquered my goal. My goal was first call out. I'd already yeah, yeah. done that in pre-judging. All right. So I don't, that's why I was buzzing by finals. Because I'd already done that. When I split second, I wanted to win. And that's when I was like, also, when I then got that second place, Joshua, I was like, you know, I had this little smile, like, oh, man. And then I was, I was, but it wasn't because, oh, no, it's all, you know, I'm so disappointed. No, I was like, yeah, that's disappointing, but great. That means I know what I want next. Yeah. And that's why I now come up with this show, like, literally from day one, I couldn't sleep. Like, I woke up, I just went to the gym, started doing shoulders because I was like, yeah, it's time, man. I'm, I'm wanting first place next time. And I'm not yeah. stepping on stage anytime soon, but yeah. I now know what I'm working towards, you know, that's the thing. And that's the great thing about, again, understanding why you feel a certain way stop reacting without actually first just and like just take a minute like why did i react like this why did i go from someone who'd never even prepped before and was just happy to be on stage to someone who all of a sudden really wants to win and what does it mean like does it mean this is more to me than that you know uh, you know and is that a bad thing is that a good thing for me uh, is that a good thing for my family my situation like everything yeah go through all that you know don't don't just automatically shut down on the reaction of the emotion because hey i could have before you know i could have been afterwards being like i'm sorry i'm upset i've been cheated like well bloom in heck man i got second place no way i was first off first place all day this is that uh you know not going back to bmbf they didn't give me what i wanted you know first place was what it was meant to be yeah because that's the other thing though i didn't document it i kept quiet for a reason you know i didn't do the whole leading up to the show this is that i was purposely doing the whole chris bumstead thing showing old pictures from 12, I was showing like 14 weeks out at two weeks out. So people weren't really sure what was going on there. And I did that for a reason. It was not, it was, this was no, oh, I just want to keep things to myself. No, I was purposely not putting out stuff on the social media for this show because again, that's another lesson I learned. And it's something I'll probably tell a lot of first timers now is yes, you can document, but it doesn't mean you got to really be putting that pressure on yourself in regards to social media because. For me in 2017, the problem I learned was I noticed I started doing things for Instagram, 
Like I was doing progress pictures for, for Instagram, not for the show, like getting ready for the show, the check-ins, everything. It was for Instagram just to, you know, like I'll do the, the, the progress video and I'm going through the video trying to find the right freeze frame for good pictures to put on Instagram, you know, and, and it just got me thinking of me being better than what I currently was because obviously you put your highlights on Instagram. So I started feeling I was that guy. So, and everybody, I, I don't care what anyone says, like even if there's negative people on there, they will still comment on your picture and still give you all the hype, whatever, and all that praise. And you just literally start feeling like I'm the best, you know, like literally like my own followers think I'm the best. Again, bodybuilding is not about your followers. It's those judges on, right in front of you. And when you show up that day, and if they don't think you're the best that day, well, yeah, don't be shocked that you're going to get that, that, that outcome. So I know it's done a lot. A lot of people want to document their, you know, their progress to the stage and everything. But, you know, what you can do is, yeah, you can do that and then release it afterwards. You know, it doesn't have to always happen leading up to it, you know, because I just feel like a lot of first timers don't understand that, you know, you don't need that kind of pressure going into a show. You really, really don't. Yeah. Um, there's a reason why a lot of seasoned pros do it. That's because it's not completely new now. You know, they can. And also they've got different kind of pressure. Some of them have actually paid sponsors. So the sponsors like, wait, we're doing a, a, go, a road to the stage, road to yeah. pro. Like, I mean, don't think it's always the athlete, all right? And then now you've got someone who's the first timer trying to do all of that. It's like, don't know. It's, it's a whole new kind of pressure. You don't understand. Like you don't need to have that. Just focus on what needs to be done, which is like you said, whatever the goal was, step on stage or be in a, a top call out or be competitive, whatever the goal is, just focus on that. Don't be that person. Then all of a sudden it's focused on that. But then also I've got to keep everyone updated on Instagram. I got to make sure I do that video, do that post, do that social media, this got to do that real, do all that. Like you're going to lose it. <laughs> you're gonna yeah. lose it. So, no, hundred yeah. percent, man. No, no, it was, a, it was a great way to wrap it up as well. So yeah. absolutely spot on. Um, yeah. If you can give one person one piece of advice that would take them 1% further forward tomorrow, what would it be? Oh, one piece of advice. Um, Just short and sweet. It has to be my, my team motto which is consistency over perfection. Like if you truly understand that you will go very far in regards to understanding that it's not about being that perfect person. All right. It's just understanding that whatever my, you know, whatever my, consistency is if i can keep working on that level and improving that i'm gonna get better because at the end of the day i get better from doing what i did better than yesterday that's how i improve that literally is it and you know it literally is that consistency every day consistency over perfection and in those times where things are so out of your control and it means you couldn't even be as consistent as you were as before as long as you did whatever you could in that day again, without being, you know, with everything out of control, again, you, you still being consistent in actually trying to do what you could do. So it takes you so far that that does, because you know, it's like people say on preps, did you never cheat on your, on your diet? Did you never do this and that? I know pros, I know world champions who cheated on that diet more than most gen pop people. All right. But because they live by this different kind of mentality. You know, there's a different kind of thing going on there. Um, and there's other non-negotiables that they have that they really make sure don't happen. You know, it's, it's a bit different. You know, people need to understand that and they don't pack it in. You know, it's not like, that's it. I had this extra thing or whatever, yeah, you know, that's it. Sure. Yeah, no, you know, so yeah, that, I think understanding that consistency over perfection really does help ground you and understand how to actually move on from anything as well. No, I absolutely love it, man. No, honestly, bro, thank you so much for your time. We could just ramble on forever, me and you. I so could, and I'm, I'm going to be late for PT client as well. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> what I'll do is I'll tag um, all Josh's stuff in links below. So any questions, head over to his Instagram and things like that. I'll put all his links below. Um, but, mate, absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. And I will see you back in the UK soon. It's very soon, brother. Thank you so much, bro. No worries, man.